Hello there. This is part two of two of our division video series, mini series. We're talking about division. In part one, we talked about basic division review and division with remainders. Now we are going to be talking about division with the distributive property. And in my fourth grade class, we talked a lot about the distributive property in multiplication. Remember, division and multiplication, this beautiful relationship that goes hand in hand together, always working together, division and, and multiplication. So a lot of the strategies that you know from multiplication, you can use in division as well. When we talk about the distributive property, all that means is distributing, fancy, distributing a number down into easier numbers that you can use to work with so that you don't have to rack your brain trying to figure these things out. If you can change the number in such a way that it's easier to work with and then kind of replace that number at the end, that's what we're going for. So let's get started. Let's do 81 divided by three. Now, in my previous video, I told you to list multiples. Great strategy. Let's just do it, just because I love it. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. We could go on, but we're going to stop. And I did that for a reason, which you'll see later. Always, always, always list your multiples when you are doing division. Get your divisor, get your brain on those multiplication facts, and list those babies out. That way you just, we, now we just have that. We know I don't know. Well, look, here's a 21. Heck, maybe we'll hit it because there's an 81. 81. I don't know. Maybe we'll hit it. And see, this is the kind of stuff you notice when you're talking about the, the distributed property. But what we need to do is we need to think about what numbers go into three. How can we change this number? So we're going to change this number. How can we change this number? Hmm. I, let's see, so we have 81 things to work with. I know that six is a multiple of three because I have my multiples listed out because I'm cool like that. I know that six is a multiple of three. Another thing I know from multiplication is that I can kind of hide a zero and then replace the zero when I'm done to make life a lot easier too. So what if I took 60 out of this 81? What if I took 60 out of there? Am I going to be able to work with that 60? Yes, because I'm going to cover up that zero and then I'm going to say six divided by three. So I'm going to say, yes, we're going to go with the 60. And then what does that leave us with? When we, if we're going to write this into some kind of funky expanded form, 60, what does that leave us with? That's going to leave us with 21. And if I have 21 left out of there, Look, here's those fireworks again. Ding, 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 ding. Fireworks for 21. So I'm feeling good about that. So once you distribute your number and you kind of think about what numbers are going to work for you, then you're then you then it's time to divide. So we have 60 divided by 3 and we have 21 divided by 3. We've turned this one division problem into two easier division problems. So we have 60 and we have 21. We've broken these up. We've, we've broken these down. Keep your eye on this guy. He's going to come into play, that addition sign. He's going to be an important member of the team in a little bit. So we have 60 and we have divided by 3. If I cover up that 0, you can do that. Cover up that 0. Hide that bad boy for a second. 6 divided by 3. If you look over here, we did three, six. And when you're listing multiples, if you count down, how many times did we count down? Two. So 60 divided by three is two. Whenever you hide a zero, I'm sorry, six divided by three is two. Whenever you hide a zero, you have to replace it. So there's your 20, 60 if you have 60 marbles and you put those marbles into three groups, everybody gets 20, they get 20 marbles each. 20 for you, 20 for you, 20 for you. Two, four, six, 20, 40, 60. 
that makes sense. And then 21 divided by three, don't forget about my fireworks here. I got excited for a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom, easy. 21 divided by three is seven. I'm working on learning my multiplication facts so I know that. That's why I'm trying to beg you to work on your multiplication facts. I beg you. Now, I told you a few minutes ago that the addition sign was going to come into play here. How so? What do you mean? Well, I have this here, 20 and 7. That's not, I don't have a quotient yet. I'm not done. Whenever you have, whenever you do the distributive property, you're going to, you're going to get partial quotients. These are called partial quotients. We have, we have distributed this number out into two separate things, two partial numbers that we put together to make the whole number. So what am I going to have to do with these partial quotients? I'm going to have to add them together to get my answer. 81 divided by three equals 27. That is how you divide using the distributive property, the listing of multiples, and the gray matter between your ears. That is so beautiful and my favorite part about you. Listing of multiples and the distributive property. Who wants to do one more? Yeah, I wanna do one more. I hear you. I know you're excited. I'm excited too. Here we go. How about let's do 68 divided by four. How are we gonna distribute 68 divided by four. What do you want to do? We have 68 and four. When you have a big number like this, first of all, what did we forget? We didn't list our multiples. So let's go ahead and do that. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. There's our multiples. We're gonna go to 10 and we're gonna stop at 10 because once we get down to 10, then we're back at 11, sort of like one. We can talk about that at another time. We're gonna stop at 10. Whenever you have a large number like this, I recommend just taking out the 10. Just take out the 10. So let's just take out the 10 because here's 40, here's 40. Let's just take that out and just start off. What do we have left? We took out the 40. What remains? 68 minus 40 is 28. We have 28 remaining. 40 plus 28 equals 68. We're allowed to use those two numbers. Now, is anyone super excited about anything? I hope you're over there saying, oh, I see. 28, we hit it there. Fireworks here. And 40, we hit it there. We hit it twice. So we have 40 divided by four, and we have 28 divided by four. We've turned this one division problem that looks kind of scary because we know 68, we know, we don't know what times four equals 68. I don't know what that is. And so that's scary. So we turned this into two easier numbers to work with, 40 and 28, which gave us two new division problems. And as luck would have it, we hit two different numbers here. So we hit 40 and that's 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. 40 divided by four is 10. And we hit 28 and 28 divided by four is seven. Now again, you've got partial products here. So you're gonna add those up. 10 plus seven equals 17. 17 is your quotient. Now, Let's do the same problem, but let's divide it. Let's distribute this 68 in a different way. Let's distribute the 68 by 48 and 20. 48 divided by, whoopsie daisy, four and 20 divided by four. If we keep going here, we can count up by fours, 40, one, two, three, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. We've hit it again. We've hit it, we've hit it, we've hit another multiple of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12, 48 divided by four is 12. 
And then 20 divided by four. Ooh. We just got fireworks all over this board tonight. Looky there. 20 divided by four. How many times down? One, two, three, four, five. Now, what are we going to do with these numbers? Woo. Getting hard to see there, isn't it? What are we going to do with these numbers? We're going to add them. We're going to add them. I'll do it over here. 12 plus 5 equals 17. My quotient remains the same. My quotient remains the same. So this is division using the distributive property when you have larger div dividends. And maybe in a later video, we'll do three-digit dividends. But this is good for now. Two-digit dividends using the distributive property fourth grade math standard. I hope this helped your fourth grader. I hope it helped you if you are the fourth grader. And we'll see you next time in another great math video.